Thanks for watching Numbskull News, and today we're getting back into college realignment, but today we're going to focus on the Big 12 and the teams that I think they should add if I was like the dictator of the Big 12. College football landscape is going towards a professional route. The Big 12 really has an opportunity to be the most exciting league in all of college football, and I know that sounds nuts with the SEC and the Big 10 out there, but if you think about it, you know, the Big Ten, is there really any parity in the Big Ten? No, it's it's all about Ohio State and once in a while Michigan or Michigan State, maybe USC, maybe Penn State can step up and do a little something. But for the most part, that's a one-team conference. SEC, you know, it's a little bit more diverse. It's either going to be Alabama or possibly Georgia. But Georgia, you know, they, they're always next year's team. They just now broke through and won the damn title. LSU can step up and do a little something. Maybe Oklahoma when they come in. Texas, outside shot of winning that conference. Maybe one day. You know, Florida. But most of the teams in both those conferences have zero shot. But in the Big 12, now that Texas and Oklahoma are gone, and you're bringing in the four new schools, and with the schools you add, I mean, this is going to be an exciting conference. With the exception of Kansas, which will probably never win this freaking conference, everybody else has a legit shot. And easily in the next 10 years, you can see, you know, five to six, maybe even seven different teams win this conference. That's parity, folks. And that's what the NFL's based all on. And that, that's when the NFL really took off and dominated the sports landscape is when they really went to a parity system. A team like the Green Bay Packers, you're talking about a minuscule freaking market, is, is a juggernaut brand. And that's why. So having said that, in, in order to get to this level of parity, to me, you know, I'm not going to add teams just because of market size, even though that's going to be, you know, that's got to be a factor. To me, the most important factor is how good are you at football? You know, are you ready to take the next step? Are you ready to compete to be the Big 12 champion? That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to use a tier system to decide who I want in the Big 12. With you know what? I'm going to start with Utah. My last video, some people from Utah got on to me because I said BYU own the state. You know, I understand Utah has better ratings than BYU. But right now, I mean, they're playing Oregon, they're playing Washington, they're playing USC. Of course, they're going to have some better ratings. But they don't have a national following. That's what BYU has. That's what TV execs look for. So, there's a good chance Utah does not get into the Big 12. But for me, that's the number one team I go for. Because they, they just won the Pac-12. They just went to the Rose Bowl. Fantastic program. I want them in the Big 12. So as far as I'm concerned, they go into the S tier, the top tier. But before I go any further, I forgot to mention, I'm leaving out Oregon and I'm leaving out Washington. Now, the reason I'm doing so, because those two schools, those two programs think so damn much of themselves. You know, they want an uneven revenue split. You know, whatever conference they go with, whether they try to make the Pac-12 work and add on a bunch of group of five teams, or they go to the Big 12, you know, they don't want to sign a grant of rights deal. They want to be able to leave any time for the Big Ten. And I think that's stupid and the Big 12 should never go for that. We're not talking about two blue blood programs here. They're good. They got a following. They're in good markets. There's a, I would love to have them into the Big 12. I think they would be incredible assets for the Big 12. However, they're acting like they're Texas and Oklahoma and they don't have that clout. They don't have that following. They're not worth that much or they would already be in the Big Ten right now. So I don't want to dick with them right now until they get humbled a little bit. Maybe it may take a few years of not getting into the Big Ten for them to be rightfully humbled. We'll see if that ever happens. And By the way, they may make it into the Big Ten and that's fine. But I'm not going to include them in this list. I think it's pie in the sky. They're too big of assholes. I don't, I don't want to deal with it. So I'm not including Oregon and Washington. So deal with that. Now let's talk about Stanford. Now, of course, the media market's fantastic. San Francisco, Bay, Bay Area. That works out great. Um, they think a lot of themselves. 
You know, and there are some rumors that Notre Dame is trying to facilitate them coming to the Big 12. And uh, they want a little bit of a uneven revenue split within the Pac-12, but I don't think it, I think if they went to the Big 12, they'd be fine with an equal share there. Um, but I think they do bring a lot to the table. They are good at football. They have a respected program. They're not always good, but they could step up and win the conference every once in a while. Uh, the ap- academics, of course, they are what they are. They're, you know, they're elite, but is that really important in today's college football landscape? It's kind of not. And, and you know what? They're, they're not too bad at basketball, at least the women's side, I don't believe. So they do have a lot to offer. So where do I put them? I think the S tier, I, I really do. I, th- I, I think they're that valuable. Uh, do I think we'll get them? No. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I mean, th- there is a chance, you know, if you believe the uh, MHVER3 guy, that, that, that that's very possible. But, I mean, we'll see. But I, you know, I would be excited to have Stanford. I really would. As long as they're not going to be jerks about stuff, you know, and just view everybody as white trash and actually try to fit in and be cool, then cool. Right, next up, Colorado. Now, more than likely, they will be in the Big 12. I know the people that run the school, their board of regions or whatever the hell they're called. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, apparently, they're not too keen on coming back to the Big 12, but the fans want to. Uh, the faculty de- definitely does not want to. <laughs> they think, you know, they think a little much of themselves as well. And their football program totally sucks. It just went totally in the toilet when they went to the Pac-12. Um, if they decided to take football seriously, because, you know, football t- brings a lot of money into the program. I mean, if you talk about prestige, there's a lot of prestige in being big time in Olympic sports. How do you fund great Olympic sports? Having a football program that can generate revenue, real revenue. And that means competing on a high level and you have to spend money to make money. So if they're willing to put in on that program, you know, because once upon a time in the Big 12, Colorado was a contender. And could they get back there again? I think they could. I'm just not sure how much they really want to as far as the people that actually run the university. I'm going to put them in the A tier, but I don't feel super good about it. Uh, the only reason I'm doing that because historically in the Big 12, they were really good. And I'm hoping maybe, maybe they can get back there. That brings us to Arizona. All right, not so good in football, really good at basketball. So they do bring value. Um, could they ever get good at football and really compete for the Big 12? Theoretically, yes. Um, I, I don't know if they'll just be another Kansas, though, where they have an elite basketball program, but the football is just never, it, it seems to never really get there. For whatever, for whatever reason, I, I'm not sure why Kansas can never compete. I mean, Kansas State can compete. I just don't know. I, I, you know, I don't know. They never hire good coaches. Are they not putting in effort to the football program? I'm not sure. And I'm not sure what's going on with Arizona and why that team is never really that good. They do bring value and they probably are coming. I mean, that's, I think that's about a hundred percent. They're coming to the big 12, but where do I rank them as far as teams? Like if I was a dictator, you know, where's my list for Arizona? I'm going to put them on the A tier, but that's just because of basketball. You know, there is a lot of value having great basketball programs within your conference. People overlook that a lot. And I know we're mainly talking about football here because football drives the economy of the college world. This is a really good basketball conference. So to add in Arizona, you know, that just adds to what this conference already is, which is really competitive. But please step up with the football. Good God Almighty. Arizona State. Great market, of course. And them in a tandem with uh, with Arizona. You have Phoenix and Tucson. But that's about all I can say about <laughs> Arizona State. Good market. I mean, I don't know. Were they good in softball? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I can only talk about football and a little bit about basketball. But they're really not good at either. And, 
you know, other than the market, to me, they don't bring a lot of value. Arizona State is a D-level team, you know, just because I don't think they'll ever be competitive in football. Maybe, uh, but it's been a shit show, man. And, you know, the, and what I'm talking about with the Big 12, making it exciting. They got to bring some excitement. Arizona State just doesn't bring any. San Diego State. Now we're talking about a little bit more excitement. They don't bring a lot of viewership. San Diego is a decent market. It's not exactly, you know, a top 10 market in the U.S. or anything. Um, it does give you a footprint inside of California for what it's worth. Uh, they don't have to contend with a pro football team, even though I don't really think that's... I think that's an overinflated stat. I mean, there's plenty of big-time universities that share markets with pro teams and they flourish they do have a lot of potential if they go to a group of five or sorry if they go to a power five conference they go to the big 12 this is a team potentially that can blow up and i think they can actually compete and win this conference i i truly believe that so therefore i'm going to put them right at the s tier because they they would be able to compete with everybody else and they would really add i know i keep hearing well, the Big 12 is not going to add any group of five schools. Well, if I'm the dictator <laughs> of this conference, I just might add some group of five schools. Next up is Cal. There's also been a lot of talk of Cal pairing with Stanford, possibly going to the Big 12, possibly going to the Big 10. And truthfully, I hope they go to the Big 10. That's an F-tier school all the way. They offer nothing in football. They offer nothing in basketball. Maybe they offer something in an in, in Olympic sport. Don't really care. I'm trying to get the Big 12 to be the most exciting freaking conference in college football. Cal gives me nothing. So therefore, I don't want them, period. Boise State. Now we're talking, all right, because this, they got a kick-ass football field. I've always loved the way that thing looked. They actually compete. They put good teams out there. They, they've done so much with crappy gr group of five money, Mountain West money. Imagine what they can do with a substantial upgrade in cash. I mean, you're talking about, you, they can have great rivalries. If we have Utah, we got BYU. It's a perfect fit for the Big 12. Boise State S tier, damn it. That's where I'm putting them. SMU, the Mustangs, they got the death penalty once upon a time. Why do they get the death penalty? Because they're doing what now everybody does, NIL. <laughs> but they do have big, deep pockets. They can pay for some players. I'm sorry, Big 12 is perfect for them. Their natural rival is TCU. You're talking about the largest market in Texas, Dallas-Fort Worth. You would have a team in Dallas, and you already got one in Fort Worth. That's perfect. So if you talk about market, that's the market. And this is a team that's on the rise. They've been really good in the AAC. I think they'd be really good in the Big 12 and possibly could win this conference eventually. They did just lose their coach to TCU. So let's see where they go. So because of that, I can't put them in the S tier, but I would love, still love to see them in the conference. I can put them in the A tier. I think they belong. Next up is Memphis. Now, I think that's an emerging market. Tennessee is blowing up. Memphis is blowing up as far as population. I know people are coming from other places. They like other schools. But you know how it is. You move to a new place after a certain amount of years. You see the culture. You kind of get into the culture. And you start supporting local teams. Memphis is a good program. They've been, you know, they've had solid teams for years. They are A tier for me. And that would also give West Virginia a little bit of a closer road trip so they could stop bitching quite so much. Let's talk about South Florida. I like South Florida. Now, UCF doesn't like them very much. <laughs> but, you know, that they've been competitive in the AAC. They've been down for the last several years. I still like having another team. The idea of having another team in the Florida market. And that would be a great rivalry with US UCF because those two schools, they hate each other. It takes them building back up to a level where they can get competitive again. But they have, let me repeat this, they have the ability to be competitive, you know. So 
I kind of like them a little better than ASU because I don't know how competitive they will eventually will be. So B tier is the proper place for South Florida for me. You know, I prefer some of these other schools over, over them, but I wouldn't be mad at South Florida coming to the Big 12. All right, let's talk about the poor, unfortunate Oregon State Beavers. They are being left out of everything. No one's really talking about them. But, you know, they've had a pretty good program. And they have one that's kind of building back up. They've been trying really, really hard. They haven't gotten very far. You know, they've had some good years, though. Have they been held back by being in the Pac-12? Quite possibly. May have been tough for them. And like I said, I'm not including Oregon or Washington. But, Oregon State would still give you a little bit of an edge into that market if you were interested in going to the Northwest. Um, could Oregon State compete in the Big 12? I think they could be competitive. I think they could be pretty salty. And I'll put them right there on the B tier. They've been Power 5 for a long time. But to me, you know, uh, teams like, you know, Memphis, teams like, uh, you know, look at Utah, look at TCU. They just kind of, to me, they've done more without having so much you know because uh utah came from the mountain west and tcu came from the mountain west it came from every other damn conference and san diego state still in the mountain west those teams have just did more with less you know and and for at least 10 years oregon state's been in the pac 10 and how much have they really done you know making power five money you know and TCU damn near won the Big 12 Conference with Texas, with Oklahoma. B-level, that's about as good as I'll get you. I don't know if they're directly in Seattle or not, but they're in the proximity of Seattle. From what I've heard from journalists there, they kind of share the market with Washington, even though I think Washington's a, probably a bigger school. Um, Washington State kind of owns half that market as far as the fan base goes, from, from what I understand. So that it is a significant market. It does get you into Seattle if you want to do that. So they have the market. How much of it they have actually don't know. Don't know how a TV exec would look at it. But they've been a good program before. You know, they've competed on a pretty high level in the Pac-12. Now, a lot of that was uh, Coach Lynch and his craziness. But, <laughs> but they have been there. They have done that. I don't know if they've, I don't know if they've won the Pac-12 before. I mean, I don't know. Maybe years and years ago i don't know maybe um but they've been more than respectable so i got them on the a level i'll put them there even though i think i'm a little bit more excited about a memphis or an smu but i, I don't want to sell washington state too short i think they've done quite a bit for what they have and what they've been competing with i think the pac 12s kind of held them down to tell you the truth i think they could do pretty well in the big 12. And a team absolutely nobody's talking about. And why would you? I mean, it's it's almost ridiculous. But the uh, University of Texas of San Antonio, UTSA, the Roadrunners. I know Conference USA. What are you talking about? Well, look, man, they've been kicking the living shit out of Conference USA for a while now. These guys are good. Are they getting, you know, four or five star recruits? No, absolutely not. They're getting like two or three stars. This is a program that's doing a lot with a little. If they got a shot in the Big 12 and an injection of real cash into that program, what can they do? That's what I always look at, you know. I mean, you look at a car that's like, wow, that car is badass. You know, it's fast as hell. What would happen if we put a supercharger on that sucker? That's kind of how I see UTSA. Now forget about ratings and all that i mean we're talking purely football here and if you're good you'll get the ratings and look at the market that they're in san antonio right next to austin two of the biggest growth areas in texas and in all the country i know what you're saying hey university of texas all right isn't freaking austin that's the of course but there's always room for the underdog that's what i'm trying to tell y'all America loves the underdog. This is the ultimate under, underdog team. And I'm not going to be unrealistic about it. They don't have a chance in hell of getting to the Big 12, I don't believe. But, you know, if to me, if a team like Colorado was just holding their nose up in the air too much, I'm going to pass them up. There's just too many options here. 
but I'm going to put them on the same level as Oregon State. You know, I, if for whatever reason, the Big 12, like it came down to the Big 12, you know, taking in UTSA, I actually think that's a team that can compete within five years. I mean, that's just how driven they seem to be. I really like them. So anyway, that's my tier list. I got Cal, which to me, there's no reason ever, ever to have Cal come into the conference. ASU, the, they may very well get in, but I'm just not excited for ASU coming here. Other than kicking the Pac-12 in the nut bag, I don't, you know, that school is kind of useless. And I'm sorry, with all apologies to the ASU fans, please tell me all the Pac-12 conference titles that you have. You know, tell me, you know, how many national titles you've won. You know, tell me all the final fours you've been to. I, I, I don't know. All right. But from what I, just out of my recollection, I don't recollect any. <laughs> any. So, you know, they, to me, you bring nothing. Um, I'm more excited for South Florida, Oregon State, and UTSA than I would be for Arizona State. Chances are Colorado and Arizona are going to are gonna show up quickly to the Big 12. We're talking next week or two. Colorado could be good at football again, maybe. Arizona, maybe. But I know damn well SMU, within five, six years of being in this conference, can make some noise. Memphis can probably make some noise within the first couple of years. And Washington State, I think, in the first two or three years can make some noise in the Big 12. So I'm actually, for those, you know, SMU, Memphis, and Washington State, I'd be more excited for one of those teams rather than Colorado or Arizona. Now, Arizona, I like them and I put them that high because of the basketball. All right, so to me, they're, they're coming to the Big 12. I mean, let's just put it that. They're coming to the Big 12, and I'm good with it because of the basketball. But I would love for them to try to do something with that damn football program. So once again... My superstar tier list here. Utah, that's my number one team. That, that's the best football program available out there. And no, Notre Dame's not available, okay? <laughs> not for the Big 12. But they're the best. Uh, Stanford, it, it, it's because they are good at football. They have a respectable program. So they're exciting in that way. And of course, you know, even though I can give a flaming crap about the academics, they are an elite academic academy. You got to include the market, even though on this list, I'm not really putting a lot of emphasis on market, but that also helps. They just, they, it's a trifecta of crap there that you can't deny with Stanford. And San Diego State, Boise State, to me, they've been ready for Power 5 for a long time. In a week, you tell me Utah, Stanford, San Diego State, and Boise State are coming here to the Big 12. Dude, I am just, I'm on fire for that. That would be awesome. That, to me, that would be the best case scenario. And if I, if I was the ruler of the Big 12, that's what I would try to make happen. And is that going to happen? Are any of those four going to come to the Big 12? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I really hope Utah does. I, I just think they're that good at football. And that's what we need is good programs that can compete on a high level because it makes everybody raise their games up and, th and that's what can create an environment to make the Big 12 the most exciting football conference in all of college sports. Anyway, I can't wait to see what happens. I'm going on vacation, so I probably won't come back with another video for a week or two. Anyway, I'll be back with some other crap whenever I do. Bye.